Happy New Year, fashion fans! And I mean it. Aren't we all excited that 2020 is coming to an end? Woof. To celebrate, I'm gonna call some of YouTube's biggest fashion and beauty creators to talk about 2020, the highlights and the lowlights of the past 12 months. I don't want those chords though. <laughs> Honestly, can't play guitar, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, Derek. Oh, you're muted, Derek. Are you there? Derek Klosberg! Hi, Ricky! Hi! Hi. Hello, hello. Hi, Derek! Now I'm staring at a picture of myself, and I'm not so happy about it. Hi, Derek. Hi, Derek! I miss you! Wow. Was that a TikTok video? Did I just do another TikTok video? We just did a TikTok. We we cannot stop with TikTok. The second that we're together, we just start TikToking nonstop. I miss you intensely. I very much miss you. How has your year been? The year's been okay. Obviously, it's um, it's not been the most interesting. <laughs> just spat at the camera. Are we okay? <laughs> like, I feel like no one's okay. okay. Well, I'm really glad that no one can see me off camera because I just Got whacked in the face by Ringley. Hi, Nick. KK's here. Hi, Nikki. Did you have a favorite trend in 2020? Favorite trend in 2020. Oh, wow. This year, we didn't do that much. <laughs> <laughs> Define trends like TikTok trends. TikTok and transitions. I am obsessed with transitions, like the way you just swipe the camera. Have you ever learned a TikTok dance? I once tried, and it took days. Then you clap, boom, and then you go. I can't wait for after COVID that you and I communicate exclusively in TikTok dance. That's all I want. Learning a TikTok <laughs> video, a dance. I think I was drenched in sweat. Meanwhile, she was like, okay, Carly, like, get it together. <laughs> so, classy, bougie, booty, and hip. Okay. Everyone's doing all these cute little like TikTok dances and I'm almost like, dang. It would take me literally three hours to learn a dance, <laughs> learn it first, and then get it on beat after that, no. I don't want to be the one to break it to you, but sadly, I don't think TikTok is going to disappear in 2021. Not going anywhere. No. <laughs> I was, the trend for me was probably like how creative people got in quarantine. People got dressed up to go to their kitchen, their cow, and it was cute. I did that, so. Mm -hmm. I'm extra a chef. <laughs> I will wear a dress to make eggs. <laughs> I honestly find it a luxury, even if I'm staying home. Clothes is literally all I have at home. I live by myself. They're my only friends. Clothes are a sanctuary for me. Just because it was lockdown didn't mean that I stopped caring about clothes. There's a time and a place for comfortable clothing and it's the gym, <laughs> sometimes bed. But other than that, you gotta keep it cute. A trend that I hated, the whole sweatpants, everybody just wearing sweatpants all day long. I respect it, I understand the need for it, and I literally am wearing a pair of sweatpants as we speak, but I miss, you know, outrageous clothes. Trends that I love are sweatpants and sweatshirts. I love it, and with a gold chain, she is fashion. <laughs> I'm not into sweatpants, I don't want stretch, it's the enemy. Okay, yeah, I said it. It normalized uh, couch clothes. I love just wearing sweatpants all day. I was like, you know what? When I dress up, I feel good about myself. So I just started dressing up. My waist is quickly disappearing. So many stretchy pants and um, <laughs> many slide on shoes. If every day of quarantine was spent just feeling like, well, I'm not gonna see anyone anyway, it would affect my mood over time for sure. I mean, it's been a great moment for like accessories for like the top waist up, you know, like a scarf. Been a great moment for necklaces and earrings. What do they call it? Zoom dressing now. Blouses. But then sometimes, sometimes I overdo it. Like right now, I'm like, do I have one too many things on? But you know, it's all I got, Derek. I'm taking any excuses to dress up lately. When I'm taking a Zoom, I like to put something exciting on. This outfit is very 2020. It's very like conservative on top, like very conservative. And then on bottom, it's like the true Brazilian samba roots. You do samba though. This is samba, right? <laughs> Isn't that Samba? I think you need classes. I made all these statement accessories that celebrities wore down the red carpet. I remember Timothy Chalamet's Louis Vuitton harness. Yeah! 
Thank you. Look at that shimmer. Just look. I like literally have it right here in case it comes up. <laughs> Put that in a box and send that <laughs> to 83. <laughs> Although I probably can't fit in it, much to my dismay. I feel like 2020 well, was the year of, of men's fashion, really. I hadn't thought about that, and I think you're 100% right. This was the yeah. year of Harry Styles on the cover of Vogue in a dress. There was the knitted Loewe Harry Styles cardigan. The power of Harry. Harry Styles thing, that was monumental. When I started, it was such a niche sector. Just taking care of yourself was seen as feminine for a guy. The aisles in Sephora are bigger for men now. Before it was like three products, that's what you got. <laughs> also an increased interest in blending kind of those lines into what is masculine for men to wear. It also is the year when gendered fashion went out the window. It feels like the dudes got a lot more experimental with what they had on. I recently, um, for my Instagram, I stepped out of my comfort zone and I did a photo shoot in like a um, two-piece skirt thing. Something I would never usually wear personally on my body, but I tried it and I looked really fucking good in it. I look good. <laughs> Sometimes like I want a little more, like I want more sexiness, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to always be so masculine. Ludovic is literally like my all-time favorite designer right now. That whole look is very... Very you me, you know? Very me. You know, I really just love showing my body. I really do. <laughs> like, girl, Always, you know, they get to wear like their cleavage. I'm like, it's my turn, okay? I want to show a nipple out. I want to really rock it. Can you tell me a little bit about why it was so important to you to make a genderless clothing line? I love when a man wears tight feminine clothing. I feel like it's just so cool to see. I myself want to wear things, but they're not cut in my size. Well, you know what? If you can't find it, you just got to make it yourself. And that's what I learned this year. Quarantine really did push me to do that. I'm like, you know what? Let me just make it myself. Have you picked up any new skills in quarantine in 2020? I really got into the like sourdough bread thing for a minute. I feel like you're the type of person who could just make a fire banana bread. I don't know why. You <laughs> look like you just really cook it up in the kitchen. Am I wrong? You're wrong. What I learned in quarantine is that I cannot cook. The only thing I can make is reservations. I actually had to let, I had to have a moment with myself where I had to like forgive myself. I can't cook. My boyfriend learned how to like roast a chicken. You know what I say to myself? We can't all be good at all things, Derek. You do so many things very well, and cooking's not one of them. That's okay. Let me tell you something, Derek Glassberg. <laughs> I did not bake a loaf of bread. I did not bake a loaf of banana bread. What was the other thing everyone was doing? Canning, jamming. I didn't do any of that. I was just surviving, okay? <laughs> That's what I did. That's the skill. Is that a fail? I think it's only a fail if you feel like a failure. I don't feel like a failure. I don't. And I don't care that I haven't baked bread. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, not everyone has been launching their own version of a historic fashion magazine in 2020, so I am not surprised to hear you did not have time to whip up a loaf of banana bread. It's been amazing, and I have to tell you, like, I could actually start to cry, but I'm not gonna. Um, every time I think of the... I've already cried three times today. Um, <laughs> the outpouring of support has been so moving and humbling. I've been invited to sit at a table and I get to bring my perspective, which is by nature colorful. You know, it's just how I see the world. Even when you look at the people in a room when you're at a fashion party, you know, everyone's so colorful and everyone has their story. I just think it's an exciting time to invite more people in to share those stories and stop guessing how people feel about things. Like, let's just invite them in and let them tell us. How did how did the things that happened following the the murder of George Floyd inform you know your content creation or the way that you see this world? I didn't really post for like three weeks for months. I just didn't feel like making videos. I feel like everybody needs to see this. Um, I didn't want it to just go away in a day or two days. I wanted to be an ongoing thing. You know, I think it's been an important year, and I think it took everyone to be trapped in their homes to actually really pay attention. There was no excuse for not doing your reading. I don't think this could have happened at another time. I think we needed the stillness of this moment to really be faced with the ugly truth. I'm just happy that a lot of the stuff that we see, we can't unsee. Things like this happen every day. How many times has this happened but it was not recorded so we don't know. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna march. I'm gonna make signs, I'm gonna protest, I'm gonna keep doing it. That part of 2020 really did give an outlook because I would have never thought I would be in something like that. I had never, ever, ever protested for anything before. But when all this went down, I felt like I needed to be out there. I need to really like let my voice be heard. Hey, boy, 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 boy.
I feel like as a country right now, we are so divided. How can we stitch ourselves back together? A wake up call is, is never pleasant. It's always a bit of like a jerky movement. In thinking about Isaac and how he's only 10 months old now, we had to have a lot of harder conversations about raising a black boy in the world that we live in. And my hope is that within the years to come, we aren't gonna have to have such heartache. <laughs> painful to feel like we're still here, but also so uh, exhilarating to see the movement. There's been tremendous change, and I feel like there's so much meaningful forward momentum to this moment. When I went to the march, it was all different types of people. It wasn't just like African-Americans, African-American, Latino, white, everybody that came together and just really marching for a cause. Voices are heard, peaceful protest. The BLM movement really did open my eyes and taught me, you know, to fight what you believe in. If I'm not using my influence to speak out, then I ultimately am a part of the problem. If you're not using your voice, you're a part of the fucking problem, period. It, it really does feel like there is a seismic shift happening. This kind of big change doesn't happen overnight. I think this year is setting... <laughs> Setting the tone for the decade ahead, I think we can only go up from here. I think there's a lot of positive <laughs> coming and on the horizon. Yeah, maybe that's the the optimism in me, which I didn't even know I had. So I'm as shocked by that as anyone else. Just a piece of advice for anybody who's watching, listening, doesn't know what to do. Opal Tometi, who is one of the co-founders of Black Lives Matter, she told me that ally is a verb. Being an ally is a verb, so it means taking action. What is your action going to be? It can be starting a conversation at the dinner table. It can be reading a book, watching a movie. Take action on your own terms. I make sure every time I'm looking for something, I make sure if there's a Black-owned alternative or a Black-owned option that I could go for first. Yes, it requires a little bit more Google search and just a little bit more. That's the one big thing that I think people can take away from 2020 is this world, unfortunately, is ran by money, so you literally put your money where your mouth is. But a lot of people, okay, you guys, this is the year we've learned a lot. Let's not mess this up. I think we're all just sort of hanging on for dear life and hoping wherever this dumpster fire rocket ship lands in 2021 will be like a more compassionate, stronger world. I think when everything started like happening, I almost feel like it was like back to back to back to back when it started like pandemic <laughs> hit, everything that happened with George Floyd and then everyone was in lockdown and it was almost like, we just needed an escape, and I think YouTube kind of provided that escape. How much have you loved YouTube in the past nine months? <laughs> I fucking loved it! There are two billion people on YouTube per day, and they all have a different point of view. Come on down to YouTube Town. I'm in YouTube Town every day because it's all my son wants to watch. You tell him I said thank you. <laughs> I'm like, how about this show? He's like, no, YouTube, mama. I was spending a lot of time learning about what the fuck is going on but it was like sometimes you need a break and so finding those ways to kind of escape and let your mind rest was so important to me a lot of my the accounts i follow became interiors accounts or like people doing mesmerizing painting or whatever i used to joke with my friends they'd be like what would be the best thing to happen to your youtube sewing channel and i'd be like oh like a sewing renaissance and then this year i honestly feel like i sort of experienced a sewing renaissance and i'm like this is not the way i wanted it to be <laughs> i get a lot of comments on my videos that like, oh, watching you get from point A to point B was so satisfying. This has been a, a year of so much uncertainty that people really value a sense of order and <laughs> contained chaos. Also, I, I found it YouTube to be a really powerful place to connect and feel less alone in a really isolating time. I don't know what day of the week it is, how many days we've been in here. Even people just showing like their daily routine during quarantine, showing the simplicity of it. Those were things that were appreciated even more by me than normal. Do you have a favorite video from 2020 you saw on someone else's channel? Oh, I love, I just love Emma Chamberlain, just like generally. So right now I'm feeding the cats. My favorite part of the day is when I get to look eye to eye with this. I think I wanted to be somebody that people thought, or people felt like were their friend. Like I wanted to feel like everybody's best friend, which is true because every time I meet anybody that watches my videos, we're besties immediately. But I think that more than ever, my goal is I want people to be able to escape into my world with me for those 15 minutes and just feel like they're hanging out with a friend. This is so big that I can't fit it in my, I can't, oh, I made a mess. Most definitely YouTube is a big distraction. It used to be a distraction for me when I was like, you know, in the closet at my, 
living with my father and I had nowhere else to go and like YouTube I would just log on and just feel like it was an escape so many amazing creators and like including you and just like Emma and like myself like we can help all these others who are going through such horrible things in their life and just escape a little bit and feel like a little bit of happiness I'm sure that there are maybe there are kids in the closet or maybe it's people in trickier family situations and thank God that there's people like you putting smiles on faces and are reminding people that you might be in the closet today, but it all gets better. So thank you. Thank you, Derek. You're so sweet. Like, it's not like. <laughs> it's what I love about YouTube the most is that it's really like a free space to say whatever you want to fucking say. And that's all. Period. Period. Once you make kind of like your own audience, they kind of like know you, and so it's easier to have like harder conversations. The one that I did with my cousin, she is transgendered, and we kind of just like kind of opened up about like the LGBT community and being like the two gay cousins in our family. Having another gay cousin made me feel comfortable about my own sexuality. We just grew up in such a like a hard lover kind of family. Like everyone in our family was very like tough. Yeah, yeah. tough love. It was was kind of hard like opening up but like at the end of the day it was just it was so worth it and it was a needed conversation i mean i kept this to myself since i was nine years old when i was diagnosed with epilepsy it was kind of the only thing i never shared right having such a huge platform so important for to share our struggles to help people out not only those who live with epilepsy but those who struggle with accepting themselves and living with their you know challenges so it was the best thing i did i just uploaded a a uh, video called Black Girl's Guide to Therapy and um, Psychiatry, so okay. I think that's my favorite video of 2020. I think for me it was almost like a letting go experience. This is something that I've always dealt with and something that I've learned. It was a process to get to even where I'm at right now in my therapy journey, so. I think it's incredible that you are speaking about therapy on YouTube because I'm a little bit older than you, don't tell anyone. There used to be such a stigma around therapy and mental health. 2020, everybody needed a therapist. Yes. Everybody. If you don't think someone needs a therapist, it's because something's wrong with you. You haven't figured it out yet. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. I think my lowest point of 2020 was right at the beginning when I was forced to come out of the closet. I actually was blackmailed to do it. But in a weird way, that is also the high point of my year because it has changed my life for the better. I um, have never felt so loved, appreciated, celebrated, and accepted. It's by sharing our weaknesses that we can sometimes save others, right? I truly believe in that. And I think, you know, some of the things that you went through in 2020, we saw on a bigger scale. There were so many people who also were dealing with personal battles and private battles and health struggles. Yeah. So I think it was so great that you that you chose to share that with everyone. And she makes tea. <laughs> Such a crazy year, but very necessary year, right? Do you think that the way that fashion industry works, how will that change going forward in a post-COVID landscape? I think it will, we will never lose the lessons that we have just learned. I think that this has been a year of reckoning with a lot of things that maybe needed to be addressed that, that hadn't been. I'm hoping that the industry was really listening, hoping that there are younger people sort of stepping up to the plate within companies and people of color. Like, gonna make sure we shake it up. I hope all these companies that have discovered problems they have in diversity and representation yeah. are stepping up to it. An accessories designer called Aurora James announced something called the 15% Pledge, which asked for businesses to devote at least 15% of their shelf space to Black-owned businesses. Amazing. So I think that bodes well 2021 and beyond. And beyond, exactly. And I was super proud of the fashion and beauty team here at YouTube that helped establish the Black Designer Initiative in September. There's so many brands out there, indie brands, brands that are just starting up that are giving you those inclusive options and they haven't gotten their limelight yet. And I really feel like it is up to us to share their light. If you're gonna sell me a piece, I wanna know is this gonna look right on me? I see a lot of new faces. When I see campaigns and stuff, I don't see the same model or the same person. I see like different faces of all genders, all sexualities, and I love that. We're gonna see brands searching to make sure that they're doing something that actually is resonating with customers. We feel like as times are changing, brands are, trying, are starting to see the light, which is us, so. We're doing away with all the sort of like fat in a meat cutting term. The stuff that was juicy and gives flavor is great, but it seems like a lot of people are sort of 
sticking to the actual meat with the protein. Ooh, I love it. Yeah. Uh, okay, I, wow. Yeah. I like that. I'm stealing that. I'm stealing that for me. I'm excited to be in this transition of fashion. I was in such a big one and I still feel like a little bit with how fashion is looking at beauty and size, race, gender, and this bigger transition with sustainability. It's very exciting. The sustainability push, I feel like, is very consumer driven. People voting with their Instagram likes and with their dollars. I think we collectively as an industry can be more thoughtful, less wasteful. Let's learn how to cherish our stuff. Let's buy things that we care about and let's be different about how we consume. Designers can approach their design process differently, more, more intentionally. The planet will be better for it, we'll all be better for it. It's like a win-win. On the bright side of things, a lot of things were birthed in 2020. The last thing that came out of 2020 is that we have a new president, okay? We have a new president, okay? We got Donald Trump out, so we Ooh, turn up for that, so we're glad we got him out. We have a black female VP, baby. It's about damn time we have some women up in here helping run our country. Every other New Year's Eve, we were like, Happy New Year. Yep. And now we're like, Happy New Year, get that shit Ooh, back. Get me out, close the door. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait. What's the first thing you're gonna do? Oh my gosh, I didn't even think about this. Oh my gosh, what the fuck am I gonna do? Is there even, is this even gonna end? Do something cute! Do something cute! Go to Cheesecake Factory with my manager. I love, I am obsessed with the Cheesecake Factory. When everything is clear, I would really like to just go to a music festival. Oh, I can't wait for concerts. I'm going to Europe. Nice to see wait, you, Larry. are you talking to Emma? Emma, I did this morning. Oh, damn, I had a good message for her. Jesus. What was the message? I was gonna say, hey, like, Paris? <laughs> Milan <laughs> question mark? I long to be in a crowd of people that are like jostling you out the way and dressing for the occasion. I miss people being fabulous. <laughs> I honestly can't wait to push you out of the way at a bar. Thanks, Derek. Soon. We could just talk about pretty shoes and how I miss wearing them. And I'm not even a dress person, but like I just want to put on a dress. I want to like get yeah. dressed. I want to go dancing. Don't you want to go dancing? To sweat all over you. Yes, like up in the club. I am gonna give you a big hug. I'm gonna jump on your neck and hug you uh -huh. and squeeze you and kiss you. Miss you, I love you. I can't wait to squeeze you in person. Hi, honey. What, what are you excited to do after quarantine's over? The first thing I'm gonna do is like hug and kiss and get really invading personal space. LA, New York, Paris, London. Everybody's gonna get <laughs> fucking annoyed with me. That is my post COVID <laughs> plan. <laughs> Derek, I love you. Oh my God, was that a, what, did I get my first ever forehead kiss? Yes! What a way to end the year. Good 2020, time. all we need is forehead kisses. That's the only thing that's gonna cure COVID. Actually, that's the only thing that will spread COVID. Don't kiss anyone's forehead. Unless it's virtually. First what? vaccine, then forehead kiss. Amen. 2020, we're out. We're out. Shall I stop her?